So today we're going to have a look at F is equal to MA as a special case of Newton's second law of motion. So in this formula, F stands for the force applied to an object, M is the mass of that object, and A is the acceleration of that object due to the force applied. So a common question you might come across is to use Newton's second law of motion to derive an equation relating force, mass, and acceleration. So what this is asking you to do is to start with Newton's second law of motion and then work your way through a derivation to get F is equal to MA. So this is the equation we're looking for. So let's have a look first at Newton's second law of motion. So it states when an external force acts on an object, the rate of change of the object's momentum is proportional to the force applied and it takes place in the direction of the force. So that's quite a mouthful. So let's break it down a wee bit and just look at the parts that we need to form an equation first. So the rate of change of the object's momentum is proportional to the force applied. So we can write that, first of all, as the force is proportional to the rate of change of momentum and likewise vice versa. So momentum is denoted by the Greek letter rho, but in this case, it's the change momentum. So we put a little delta sign in front of it. So this is saying that the force applied is proportional to the change momentum, and likewise, the change in momentum is proportional to the force applied. So basically means the bigger the force you apply to this object, the more momentum you're going to give it. Okay, so let's have a look first. So I'm going to have a rough work section on the right here. And we're going to have a look at momentum first. So the definition of the momentum of an object is the object's mass times its velocity, V. But we're not looking at just momentum we're looking at the rate of change momentum so we're looking for delta p so or delta rho so we're basically asking what is the rate of change of momentum dependent on as in what changes to make momentum change so it can't be the mass the mass is constant if you have an object its mass isn't going to change so m stays the same so that means that the rate of change of momentum has to be dependent on the velocity. So as your velocity changes, your momentum will change. Okay, so you can write change in velocity in two ways. So delta V or change in velocity is equal to your final velocity V minus your initial velocity U over the time taken T. And the other way you can write it is just as A, the acceleration. Because the definition of acceleration is the change in an object's velocity. So remember as well, acceleration doesn't necessarily mean speeding up. A change in velocity can mean slowing down, it can mean speeding up, or it can just mean changing direction because velocity is a vector and it has a direction associated with it. So in this case, we can write delta rho, or the change in momentum, is equal to m times a. So the mass of the object times acceleration. So what we can do is we can take this back up and we can sub it in here. So now we have f is proportional to ma. So we have all our quantities that we need. We just need to show that they're equal to each other. So if two things are proportional, they're related by a constant. So that means if I multiply MA by this constant, I'm just going to call it K for the minute. That means it'll be equal to F. So we can write that as F is equal to KMA. And then we just need to write down here where K is a constant. We don't know what K is at the minute. That's what we're going to figure out next. And to do that, we need to look at 
the definition of the Newton. Newton, sorry. So force is measured in Newtons. And the definition of one Newton is the force needed to accelerate one kilogram, so a mass of one kilogram, by one meter per second squared. So one Newton is the force needed to accelerate, um, accelerate a mass of one kilogram by one meter per second squared. So if we have a look at our formula here. So we have F is equal to KMA. So one Newton, so we'll just sub in one for F, has to be equal to, so the constant that we're looking to find out. It has to be equal to a mass of one kilogram times a mass or times an acceleration of one by the definition of a Newton. So that means it's K multiplied by one times one. So this is telling us that k, our constant, must be equal to 1 by the definition. Of the Newton. And then our last step is to sub that back into the formula. So that means that we have F is equal to M A as required. And that is your derivation done. OK. So just to summarize, you need to start with Newton's second law. You need to put it into an equation form like this, and then you need to work through the change in momentum to get down to delta rho is equal to ma. You soak that in, and then you figure out your constant k by using the definition of the Newton, and then you get f is equal to ma as required. So we've just shown that f is equal to ma is in fact a special case of Newton's second law of motion.